This is a Western Australian sandalwood and it's growing here in New South Wales. I'm just going to measure it. I'm just going to measure it. It's a couple of years old now. I want to see how tall it is. There's one yard. One yard and how many inches? Oh, Twelve inches. So it's four feet. It's one yard, that's three foot plus twelve inches. That's four feet, isn't it? 60 centimetres plus how many centimetres? Another 30 centimetres, so it's 90 centimetres, getting up to almost a metre. That's doing pretty well then. That's doing pretty well. We have cold frosty nights here. That was growing up in a pot of course. And it was singled out for a special treatment, you know, being in a pot and everything, it was easy to water. So, what we're talking about is uh, Santalum spicatum. It's the Western Australian sandalwood. It has an edible nut, it has fragrant wood, and it's a source of uh, rich uh, sandalwood oil that's used in the perfumery business. It's used in the chewing tobacco business if you're into tobacco, to make fragrant tobacco. Apparently you dig up the whole tree when you harvest it because the roots are rich in valuable sandalwood oil too. And as a native bush tucker sp species, uh, it was a source of edible nuts for our indigenous people, well that still is. They still eat nuts in Western Australia, sandalwood nuts. I think there's been some commercial production of sandalwood nuts. So this, these trees are a couple of years old now. They're a couple of years old and um, they're getting bigger and they can definitely stand the cold frosty nights here in the Lachlan Valley. And uh, yes, they're quite drought resistant. And, oh, they do get a bit knocked around in the cold, they do. They do get a bit miserable in the winter time, but they survive. So, they can stand quite some degrees of frost, and they can get through the frost and uh, sort of become rejuvenated in spring again. All my sandalwood trees will grow in from nuts. They're all grown from nuts and uh, I've got these ones wrapped up in concrete bricks so that that bad little kangaroo won't eat them. I want them to get to a good size without being nibbled. If that kangaroo nibbles them they go back down to ground level and have to start all over again. So that's a nice specimen, a nice healthy specimen and uh, the protection I've put around it will help it uh, be Protect, it'll be protected from the frost a little bit. The months are going to be cold. The next couple of months are going to be quite cold with heavy frost. They do get miserable, but this one's uh, getting nice and tough and starting to get woody. Here's another I've got protected from the kangaroo. Nice specimen. Look at that. It's a good size, becoming nice and woody. Once it gets woody and tough, it can look after itself properly. So we're looking at we're looking at Santalum spicatum, the Western Australian uh, sandalwood tree, and they're growing here in New South Wales, growing from seeds. They're getting to be a couple of years old now, most of them. I don't know how old that one is. They're old. They didn't all come up at exactly the same time. I sprinkle seeds everywhere, and they're the source of uh, expensive sandalwood and sandalwood oil, 
and the source of the uh, bush tucker nut. They're quite attractive little trees. They're related to quandongs too. They do have uh, some, uh, they're not known for their fruits. You can eat the nut in a quandong as well, but um, these uh, you only eat the nuts of. They're only not renowned for their nuts. They're not renowned for any fruit as quandongs are renowned for both nuts and the fleshy fruits. So it's clear that kangaroos, wallabies, consider them as food. So if you're going to grow them, you want to protect them from uh, wallabies. It's getting nice and woody, that one. So here we are, the Latin, botanical Latin again, Santalum spicatum, the Australian, Western Australian sandalwood, a good bush tucker species. It's autumn. This is an Osage orange tree, by the way. Oh, I forgot to mention, these are hemiparasitic, aren't they? These have to have something to uh, latch their roots on when they get older, otherwise I think they die. So they're like mistletoe except they're under the ground. They could latch onto this I suppose, but there's a giant wattle tree just over there and all its roots come over here anyway, so this one can uh, feast on those, on the blood of that wattle tree. They've got to have something to uh, live on, they've got to some have something to par parasitize. I'm being eaten by mosquitoes now. Go away. See you then.